The Oncotype DX recurrent score test has been used now for probably almost 14 years um, to really look at ER positive breast cancers and originally for early stage breast cancers. So it was originally designated for node negative patients. Obviously, since that time, it has now been incorporated into node positive patients, but it really was to determine what is the likelihood that a woman would benefit from the addition of chemotherapy to hormone therapy for these ER positive breast cancers. The recurrent score is used for women that have ER positive breast cancers. Specifically, it's utilized to determine what the risk is of that cancer to really understand the biology of that breast cancer. Because once we know the biology, we can better determine what the best adjuvant therapy is. So should that just be hormone therapy or should that woman also get chemotherapy? So really it's specifically used to predict chemotherapy benefit, but at the same time give prognosis for that patient. The Oncotype recurrent score is a genomic assay that's based on 21 genes and specifically 16 cancer related genes. When this recurrent score was first developed, and became available for patients, there was some consideration that maybe oncologists could predict what the recurrent score was going to be based on characteristics such as the grade of the tumor, the size of the tumor, or even the age of the patient. Another characteristic that pathologists use, something called the KI-67. Sometimes oncologists felt they could predict the recurrent score based on the KI-67. However, over the last 10 or 12 years, there's been a number of studies that have shown, regardless of what the KI-67 is, the grade of the patient, or the age, you really can't predict what the recurrent score is going to be. So in the clinic, physicians and oncologists need to realize that even though they may have a sense that maybe this is a low-risk tumor, it really still can be a high recurrent score tumor or even vice versa. Previously, we had used a number of prognostic factors to help understand what the future risk was for women diagnosed with early stage estrogen positive breast cancer. Those factors were things like tumor size, patient age, and the grade of that tumor. However, it was realized that that wasn't the best way to understand the risk for these patients. And really these genomic assays like the recurrent score better predict and prognosticate for these patients. Now having said that, it is important to understand that these other clinical factors, such as age, tumor size, and grade, can also be used with the genomic assay for better prognosis. However, even more importantly is that the prediction of chemotherapy benefit that is gotten from the recurrence score does not change with these prognostic characteristics. So it is a good way for prognosis to combine both the genomic assay and these other clinical factors. But when it comes to chemotherapy prediction, it truly is just the genomic assay itself. When utilizing the genomic assay, the recurrent score, you should also keep into mind other factors such as patient's age, tumor size, and potentially grade. Now these are important sometimes for determining adjuvant therapy when patients have, for example, a lower recurrent score. So if a woman has a low recurrent score and she's not gonna benefit from the addition of chemotherapy, it is possible to use these other prognostic factors such as age and tumor size to potentially change or augment the type of hormone therapy that patient might get. So you can use these prognostic characteristics in conjunction with the recurrent score, but again, it's not to determine chemotherapy benefit, but potentially to augment the type of endocrine therapy that that patient might receive. There are definitely going to be cases that oncologists see that are at what I call the periphery of the range of biology. So for example, a woman in the age category of 75 to 80 who has a sub-centimeter tumor that is strongly estrogen receptor positive, progesterone receptor positive, and a grade one, it's highly likely that that recurrent score is going to be low risk. So in that case, it may not be cost effective or helpful to order the recurrent score in this type of patient. So again, someone who has a very small cancer, she's older in the 70 to 80 age group, um, it probably will almost always be low risk. So there are some cases where you could probably avoid utilizing the recurrent score, but it's a very small number of cases.